Food safety is a multi-layer approach. Obviously, cleaning your hands and washing your equipment is important, but refrigeration and pasteurization in some cases are another element of it. But preservatives also fall into that. So let me show you how to use a preservative like sodium benzoate and potassium sorbate to prevent bacterial and mold growth in anything you create that needs it. I'm Dress O'Neill and this is Art of Drink. If you read the internet and you look up sodium benzoate, you'll kind of get a bad impression, but don't because, you know, the internet, YouTube, it's all about getting the most amount of clicks and clickbaity titles with terrible things will scare you into believing it. But as somebody who studied chemistry and worked in research labs for 15 years, I'm gonna put it to you straight. I'll explain why sodium benzoate is actually super safe to use and the alternative without a preservative is so much worse for you. So let me talk about that a little bit. Now, sodium benzoate is a simple compound. It's actually found in nature in the form of benzoic acid. Blueberries are one of the crops that actually has a fair amount of it. And the thing about sodium benzoate is it's so much safer than the alternative of bacteria in molds in your food. So one of the things is that molds produce, molds and bacteria can produce serious toxins like shiga toxin. And if you don't know what shiga toxin is, it comes from E. coli or a specific strain of E. coli. And it's 140 times more toxic than rattlesnake venom. Whereas ethyl benzoate, so much safer. You could eat a couple teaspoons of this, like for my size, 80 kilo guy. I could eat a tablespoon or two and it would have limited effect on me. But the bacteria from E. coli or even botulism, they are more toxic than most snake venoms. And actually, if you look at the top 20 most toxic compounds to humankind, it is bacteria and molds that actually dominate. Snakes come in below that. But here's, you don't have to believe me. All you have to do is understand that countries that don't have access to clean water or a safe food supply have a lifespan about 30 years shorter than countries that do. And of course, wars and all sorts of other things factor into that. But here's the reality. If you're exposed to microdoses of these toxins from bacteria and molds over the lifespan, so 50 years, they do weaken your body. They are, again, as toxic as snake venom. And what happens is that you may not even suffer many effects from a repeated exposure to bacteria and mold toxins, but over a long period of time, they do attack your organs and your nervous system. Whereas sodium benzoate does not do that. It simply passes through your system. Sometimes it's metabolized, but our body handles it perfectly well. Unlike most of the toxins from E. coli, our body just is just supportive to get through it. But again, you don't actually have to have any symptoms from these toxins. Just a long-term repeated exposure from bacteria and mold toxins will damage your system. And again, look at countries that don't have access to clean water and clean food and you'll find the short the lifespan is way shorter. Now, obviously, some of you may have heard of benzene being formed from sodium benzoate, and that only happens in a very specific condition where vitamin C, sodium benzoate, copper, and iron ions are present and or strong UV light. And sure, it can happen, but it produces benzene in the microgram or nanogram doses. A nanogram dose is one millionth of a milligram. Now our body handles benzene reasonably well. We, we do metabolize it, get it out of our system. In fact, uh, some of the amino acids in our body through me metabolic processes produce benzene, again, on a very tiny amount. But the idea is you just wanna reduce exposure. So most soda companies or beverage companies just remove vitamin C from their formulations, uh, often used as an antioxidant in the beverage. It's not really needed. But any other conditions, it will not happen in your body. It will not happen in any other conditions. If you do not have vitamin C present, you cannot get benzene from sodium benzoate. It is only under those very specific conditions. I will happily take sodium benzoate and keep those bacterial and mold toxins out of anything I make because those are just so much worse for you. And having a safe beverage that I can consume that I know is not contaminated with anything. So preservatives prevent that 
sodium benzoate and potassium sorbate do an excellent job of that along with pH and water activity, which is having sugar levels high enough. But pH is one of your best control methods, but these two give you more margin to work with things that are not really low in the pH. So enough safety talk. Let me show you how to make a sodium benzoate preservative that you can use in a dropper bottle to make things like diet soda. So making a sodium benzoate potassium sorbate combination, they're very often used together. A solution is actually fairly easy. You just need obviously a sodium benzoate. You can find it online. It's readily available. Potassium sorbate, again, readily available. Uh, wine shops or wine homebrew shops have it. Uh, you'll need some beakers, a balance that can do two digits, uh, 0.00. Um, again, 30 bucks on Amazon, uh, fairly cheap and relatively accurate. You can buy volumetric flasks if you want to be really accurate, but any beaker that will handle 100 mils and where you can actually measure it will work fine. A couple dropper bottles or one dropper bottle will work and labels. It's always good to uh, have labels as well as some distilled water. Now I use distilled water. Again, that's part of the sanitation thing. If you use tap water, it's unlikely you're gonna get bacterial contamination, but you can. With distilled water, you're almost guaranteed not to. We're gonna make a 150 parts per million per mil solution. So that means one milliliter of this solution in one liter of soda or even a syrup is enough to preserve it and make it shelf stable. Now, often it's used in combination with potassium sorbate. They both act upon different things like molds and bacteria. They are synergistic, so often do use them together uh, and they are quite cheap. So what you really wanna do is you're going to measure out 15 grams so 15 grams in 100 mils will get you 150 parts per million per milliliter. Basically the math, it's actually not that complicated. So we just need a spoon. Now you do wanna be reasonably accurate with that. You can't go above 150 parts per million of benzoic acid. Now the calculations, this is actually gonna produce 100, roughly 130 parts per million of benzoic acid even though the solution is 150 parts per million of sodium benzoate. That's just a little bit of a safety margin for you, but you don't wanna go over 15 grams per 100 milliliters of solution. Now the next step is to weigh out 25 grams of potassium sorbate, uh, weigh it into a different container. So 25 grams of potassium sorbate into a separate container, just so you don't mess things up. Now that you have that, pretty simple. You just dump it into your solution. Now for this step, you just wanna use some distilled water to start, but you're just going to get it close to the 100 mil mark. And then you're gonna put in a magnetic stir. Again, you can put this in a bottle and shake it and stir it with your hands, but I just find a magnetic stir saves me time. So let that stir until it is mostly dissolved. And then we will top up to the 100 mil mark to get it accurate. So I've let that stir for a couple minutes. Uh, it still seems a little bit hazy, but if you're buying the potassium sorbate that's extruded or pelletized, it seems to have a lot of air in it. So it just gets entrained in there. So while you're stirring, it, it'll always seem hazy. Just turn off the stirrer and you'll end up seeing that it clears out. Uh, but we need to take out the magnetic stirrer. Set that to the side. And we just need to bring this up to 100 mils. And again, this is accurate enough. If you wanna be really accurate, you can use volumetric flasks, but for our purposes, this will be more than sufficient. So that is our solution. Now we just have to transfer it to a 120 mil bottle or a 100 mil bottle. That is your preservative solution. So every time you make a liter of soda, if you're going to store it for a month, let's say, and you want it to be shelf stable, you will add one milliliter of this per liter of whatever you're making. And that will get you to the 150 parts per million, technically 130 parts per million of benzoic acid. Obviously alcohol and other propylene glycol do have preservative values in your syrups. 
So if you're making a essence, for example, with alcohol, you don't need this. If you're making an essence with all propylene glycol, you don't need this. This is only for something where you're going to have 60% or more water and you know 60% or less sugar. It's this idea that this is for specific applications. You do not need to put it in everything. Again, essences, anything with alcohol or a high proportion of propylene glycol, not necessary. Even a high proportion of glycerin, not necessary. Diet sodas, chocolate syrups, syrups that are low in sugar, below the one to one ratio. So if you're trying to go for a really low sweetener value and you're only using like half a cup of sugar to one cup of water, you will need this for any shelf stability. Again, refrigerators offer a lot of stability or shelf stable prevent bacterial growth. So if you're keeping things in the fridge, you probably don't need this. But if you're making enough where you wanna store it on a shelf, so for example, a bar, or you're commercializing something, uh, this will be handy. Again, one mil for every liter of whatever you're making. So if you're making one liter of syrup, you will use one mil of this. And that will give you 150 parts per million of sodium benzoate and 250 parts per million of potassium sorbate. And those are the recommended levels for beverages. You can't actually go higher than that. So that's the maximum level and the effective level. If you want to know more about how to use this, check out my video on how to make a diet soda because we incorporate that into it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.